we've got to five past 10. We are well over 200 and it looks like people are still joining. Um, but I think so that we can actually uh, get through the programme, I think I probably do need to make a start. So um, we'll leave the poll up and running for a little bit longer, but the poll is just to find out uh, whether, whether you use the star or not and which one you use. Um, so far, 75% of the people on the webinar are currently using the homelessness star, 23% um, are using other stars, and 11% are not yet using a star. So given that adds up to more than 100%, some of you are using more than one star by the sound, by the sound of things. So, okay, I will um, leave the poll for the time being, and I'll just introduce myself properly. Uh, I've already said to, to those of you that were on a bit earlier, my name's Graham Randalls. Um, I'm the Managing Director of Triangle. Um, I'm essentially hosting and, intro and introducing the webinar today. Um, the majority of the presentation is going to be by Sarah, who's the other person you can hopefully see on your screens. Um, so Jen, who's in the background, our, um, our webinar coordinator, could you perhaps move us on to the, uh, uh, to the next page? This is the webinar for the Home Star, the outcome star for people with housing and other needs. Okay. So just a very brief introduction. Uh, you probably know most of this already, but the Home Star is the new edition uh, of the Outcome Star for homelessness, for housing and other needs, sorry. Um, now, our very first Outcome Star was, uh, was the Homelessness Star. Um, many people just simply call it the Homelessness Star. Um, and that was published in 2006. So the new Home Star is, is essentially designed to um, update and eventually replace that star, and it will be made available from the 4th of April. So this webinar is to let you all know about it. Um, it's a bit of an advanced communication. It's not yet available, but it will be in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, it will be very, very helpful for those of you who are currently using the Homelessness Star but I'm sure those of, you that, those of you that are using other stars will benefit a lot as well. And um, I'm sure it's gonna be useful for those of you who don't yet use an outcome star. There's, there's plenty, um, plenty for you to learn um, about the homelessness star, about the home star uh, and, and all outcome star today. So Jen, if you could flip to the next slide. So our agenda for today, um, so Sarah Burns is going to be doing the majority of present, presenting. Um, we'll start with a brief history uh, of the Homelessness Star, um, if you could nip back, Jen. Um, so the Homelessness Star, uh, let's say since 2006, so we, we, we're getting close to 20 years. Uh, if, you, if you count the amount of time it took to develop the Homelessness Star, then it probably is close to 20 years. Um, we're going to tell you a bit about why and how we reviewed the star um, and then the improvements made. And then Sarah's going to give you more detail about the Home Star itself, the star areas, the journey of change, et cetera. Um, once again, given that uh, a large proportion of you are using the Homelessness Star at the moment, we'll tell you what, is, what it entails to switch from the Homelessness Star to the, the new Home Star. Um, and then we have Q&A at the end. So there is Q&A on Zoom. You can put questions in the chat, but if it's questions for the host, for the panelists, uh, much better to put those into the Q&A section and then we'll pick those up very easily and we'll make sure that they get answered as best we can. Um, but do feel free to um, communicate in the chat. There's a bunch of triangle people on the chat as well. So um, if questions occur to you and you just want to pop it, pop it into the chat, that's not a problem. Um, okay, Jen, if you pop onto the next slide. So I'll just give you a very, very brief bit of background about Triangle, just for those of you who might not know. Um, some of you are new to the Outcome Star. Um, so Triangle is the social enterprise behind the Outcome Star. Um, uh, it was uh, started in January 2004 um, as, a, as a small team of consultants working together um, and then began operating as a social enterprise in 2009. So our formal um, organization name is Triangle Consulting Social Enterprise Limited now. Um, we are a mission-led organization as a social enterprise. Um, we, um, our purpose is to help service providers like all of your organizations to transform the lives of the people that you work with. So our, our mission is to help you to help other people to transform their lives. Um, we've always been a values-based uh, organization uh, we really value collaboration and 
Um, when we talk about collaboration, we're thinking about that in the broader sense and at all levels. Um, we collaborate with, uh, with service providers and service users in the design and the development of STARS. Um, and we feel that we want to collaborate very, very closely with service, with, uh, service providers in implementing the STAR and supporting you in your ongoing journey of using the STAR. Um, of course, most of what we do is around the STAR, pretty much everything uh, is around the STAR, developing and supporting good use of all of the outcome STARs. Um, I should mention there are over 40 different outcome STARs now, if you weren't aware of that. Um, but we are increasingly uh, looking to work alongside others to help people to transform lives and uh, Joy McKeith, who um, is one of our founding directors, recently wrote a report called Enabling Help, which is our view based on 20 years of experience of how services best seem to support people to enable them to transform their lives. Jen, could we go on to the next slide, please? Uh, I'll try and keep this very brief, but some key stats about Triangle and the Outcome Star. Well, well over 1.4 million stars on the Star Online alone. Um, I think that figure's already much higher. We're, we're, we're adding new stars at the rate of something like 50,000 every quarter. So uh, an enormous number of stars being completed with, with service users all the time. Um, we did a bit of a survey a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, um, where 87% of those um, amongst our clients that we surveyed reported that uh, the Outcome Star helped to improve key work. Um, and just to let you know, as you might have gathered from the intro and the chat, there are now over a thousand organizations around the world uh, using the Outcome Star. And we have people on this uh, webinar from Australia, from Prague, from Hong Kong, um, and of course, uh, a very large number from across the UK. So let's go to the next slide. Um, so just to very quickly let you know, if you didn't know already, uh, STARS are designed to be collaboratively completed. Um, we do a lot of work into uh, their validity, a lot of research, and we have Dr. Anna Good on the call who can uh, answer any questions you might have about the validity of outcome STARS. Um, and as I've already mentioned, we're now um, well over 40 versions of the outcome STAR tailored to uh, specific sector use. And may I go to the next slide? Okay. So I think you've probably heard enough from me uh, with my radio banter and that introduction, that's probably enough, but I do want to part by introducing Sarah Burns. Uh, Sarah is a founding director of Triangle um, and is also our lead on star development and has been for, well, we heard it, 20 years. Um, Sarah's background uh, originally it was in evaluation. Um, she's been specializing in outcomes since the 1990s and uh, um, in the early days, won awards for her early pioneering work. Um, uh, Sarah's original collaborators back in 2002 were Joy McKeith, who is our other founder director who's on the webinar today, uh, and Kate Graham, uh, who helped to create the original stars and uh, set up Triangle. And um, by all means, ask them questions about that if you wish. Um, and Sarah is still fascinated by understanding and capturing the essence of how people change after developing over 40 stars. So um, that's quite an achievement, Sarah. And I think on that, I will hand it over to you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Graham. Thank you. And just to say to people, we are going to send out a recording of this webinar to everybody who's registered, include, including all of you here. Um, Jen, the next slide, please. So yeah, as Graham said, it is 20 years this year since we started work. Uh, we may need to find some way to mark that. And that was me, Joy and um, Kate getting together in response to um, a bid to work for St with St Mungo's to de design an outcomes tool for them. Um, and that we, we completed in 2003 as a sort of first prototype star. So even if you do use a star, you may not know all of this background. Um, and so actually Triangle is an outcome of the Outcome Star. We formed as, as Triangle at the beginning of 2004, basically based on the fact that it had gone quite well for the three of us working together. Uh, it was creative, enjoyable and seemed to work. So um, that star was obviously just for St Mungo's in 2003, but then was tested more widely in the homelessness sector in um, the following couple of years. Uh, the original with St Mungo was St Mungo's was co-funded uh, by the London Housing Foundation, who were really quite um, fundamental in our in the sort of early days of getting the star going. 
Um, and a condition of that funding was that the STAR or the resulting tool would be widely shared in the homelessness sector, particularly in London. So that meant lots of other people picked it up and used it in different ways. And it was through that work that we could really see the potential of it as a key working tool as well as an outcomes tool. And uh, so we then drew together all of that learning across those organizations with the help of the London Fa Housing Foundation. And so the first STAR was published online in 2006. So that was the start. But now, as Graham has sort of said, that it's, it's used very widely and, very, and internationally. Next, please. Um, so this is the Homelessness Star, the original Homelessness Star, though currently in edition 3.1, it isn't actually very different than the one we published in 2006. Um, as you can see, it's a number of outcome areas and each of those scales, you've got the numbers one to 10 on each of those uh, 10 scales. And that's underpinned by a, by a journey of change, by an understanding of how people change which I'll go into in, in more detail when we get to the, the new version of it. And we have um, supporting documents for that, or we have a user guide and a star chart and, and guidance for the, for the homelessness star. And this uh, having 10 outcome areas on a scale of one to 10, that's the most of any of the stars. Uh, they're, they're all between five and 10 outcome areas and either on a scale of one to 10 or one to five. Next, please, Jen. Um, but that history of collaboration continues. I mean, collaboration is absolutely core to what we do at every single level. So you've got um, the, the, uh, the level of a worker sitting down with a service user, with someone they support, and the STAR is co completed collaboratively. The idea is that it is the basis of a conversation, that it really supports people to engage in that process, to see where they're at, to see what they need and be really an active part of that. But we also, um, well, we, we run training, we offer implementation support to all those using the STAR with a, with a license with us. And um, we also encourage a really sort of what I would term a sort of curious engagement and learning from outcomes data using the outcome STAR. You know, it's not, we always say it doesn't give final answers, it helps you ask better and better questions. So it's a way to really interrogate and learn what's happening, are people uh, benefiting? And as Graham mentioned, we're part of a, a growing conversation about how people can receive the help they need uh, that's enabling uh, of them. Next, please. Um, so why we reviewed it, I mean, well, partly because it was developed in 2006, um, the latest edition had been 2017, but partly we do keep all the stars under review as much as we possibly can. Um, that's part of what we do, part of how we invest the star license fee. But also, yes, I say this was early, it's very, very widely used. Um, and also that we're aware that a lot has changed in the sector. I mean, some of the changes we've seen is that when we first created the um, Outcome Star, there were, it was mostly for single homeless men, um, but now there are far more women accessing services um, and people have more, you know, often have more complex needs that are coming into services. They, they maybe the services that were there for them are reduced. So, so the services are now seeing people with more complex needs than they had than they were before. More and more of them are shorter term. There's more pressure in terms of funding. Um, so yeah, client groups change. We've also learned a lot. Uh, you know, forty. Well, it's, I think it's closer to fifty now. Outcome stars written, but also, you know, we've been training ourselves. We've been listening to feedback. We've been engaging. You know, particularly in what it means to be really effectively trauma-informed and person-centered. The stars have always been person-centered because it is about that human being, but we've learned more about how to really enable that over the years. And we wanted to bring that learning into the homelessness star. It's our first ever. Um, and also we're aware that the external environment in which people are has got uh, tougher. So housing, economics, work, access to work, all of that is more of a factor, and we wanted to reflect that more explicitly in the new in the new edition. 
So basically, all of that was about really bringing this star up to date and making it as good as it can be. We, we're very proud of it. So it's our first and sort of flagship star, but we really wanted to make it as good and relevant and accessible as it possibly could be. Next, please, Jen. So it's been quite a drawn out process, what with one thing and another. I mean, even before we, we sort of um, officially started the review in April uh, 2020, so nearly two years ago, with um, when we had a round table, we called a round table of, of users of the star. But even before that, we had different things, including a workshop with uh, Brighton Women's Centre of uh, women's organisations and also uh, meeting with um, uh, making every adult matter um, and others, but also just lots and lots of anecdotal feedback. Obviously the people who train in this star, our implementation leads who support people to use it, are listening to feedback all the time, passing that on uh, to me and others in the star development team. So we, we knew a lot and then we formally launched a review in uh, 20, you know, April, 2020. Um, as part of that, we've just put out a really wide call for feedback. We emailed absolutely everybody on our list who use the star. We put it in our newsletter. We put it on the website. So we, we opened it up as much as we possibly could. Um, and then we, for those people who really responded, really engaged, we said, oh, could we run drafts by you? And we did that in both April and November last year and finally had a workshop organized with um, PI, uh, Psychologically Informed Environments um, in December, which was our last bit of feedback before drawing it all together and writing the final version in, in January this year, which has since then been going through our, our editing and production process. So it's been quite, quite drawn out, um, but really, really helpful. And we're very confident in the process. Next, please. These are just some of the people that um, have uh, responded to this initial, to this latest sort of round um, you've got in their homeless link, for example. And I think I noticed in the chat that both P3 and Two Saints are represented here and there may well be others as well. Crisis also very helpful. Um, and several in Australia, including uh, Salvation Army and Rua. And of course, Unique Outcomes who are the providers of the outcome star in Australia and New Zealand. So thank you all to, to thank you to all of you. Next, please. So I'm gonna talk through a bit of what changed. So I've got three slides on what's changed and then I'll show you the new home star. So one of the things that's changed is that we've improved the language throughout. Um, and part of that was about being more client centered. And I think that's really obvious, for example, in terms of the actual star itself, we've changed the names of the areas of it. So the actual star diagram will, will come across as quite different for people. So for example, emotional and mental health in the homelessness star is now changed to how I feel. Self-care and living skills is called caring for myself and my space. So we're trying to move away from professional language, jargon language, and also very much use I and my in, in that to be really obviously client centered. And also um, I'll talk a bit about, there's minor changes to the underlying journey of change. Uh, but one of those was we've moved accepting help as the second stage to getting help. And again, I hope it's, it's clear that that's very much again from a client perspective. If you're a worker, it looks like somebody's now accepting help where they weren't before. But if you're um, accessing that service, it, it feels to you more like, OK, now I am actually getting help. Whereas in the previous stage, it wouldn't have felt like that. Um, and also we've changed uh, the language um, to be more trauma informed. Um, so one of the ways we've done that is trying to be even more explicit that things might be stuck or somebody might not be meaningfully um, accepting, getting help, engaging with a service for many reasons, including um, past uh, bad experiences or the service isn't quite right for them. Um, we're also have, have taken out some words that some people said were could trigger people. 
and also even the color red from that initial stage um, because again that can that can sometimes trigger people so we've moved that to a much more sort of neutral dark gray and we're, we've also changed language where there was any sense that it might imply blame of the uh, person accessing the service obviously that was never our intention but we've looked really closely at the wording with a lot of people and and um changed where we need to so for example you've got there one example would be um, for a reason for being stuck that runs through this through the scales um, you don't have the help you need or are not ready to engage with it perhaps it doesn't work for you or it's hard to trust it so with throughout the stars we we have you know we're very limited by the number of words and characters we can use uh, i mean obviously we impose that limit on ourselves but I think we've got the balance right because we don't want it to be uh, too wordy. Um, but that's so that's what we've honed down as is trying to explain all the differences, different reasons why you might be at one or two on the star. Next, please. Um, also, I've said earlier, you know, obviously the client group in, in uh, homelessness um, and related services has changed. So we've done more to respond to women, sort of more references to family, children, um, and also um, some references to domestic abuse in, in, and particularly in the relationship scale. Um, another thing is, is trying to respond better to the fact that a lot of people now have complex needs and it's not appropriate for them to be aiming to be self-reliant and not have a service at all to be managing their own tenancy independently. So it's, it was already the case in the Homelessness Star that eight was a sort of outcome achieved with support is, is the way we've seen it. But we've made that much more explicit in the, the new version and, and also in the accompanying guidance. Uh, we've also made much more explicit reference to the impact of external factors, um, both in the guidance and in the introduction, which happened anyway, but now also woven through the scales. Next, please. And finally, there's also changes. I mean, some of the scales are just tweaked in response to, to what I've just said. Others are changed really quite substantially. So for example, um, the offending scale didn't work for people, partly because of that wording. They, a lot of people found it offensive and off-putting, um, but also because there was nowhere really explicit to talk about being a victim of crime. And obviously a lot of people experiencing homelessness are also vulnerable to crime. So we've completely changed that scale and it's now called safety and crime and weaves throughout it, both you know, being involved in, in uh, criminal behavior, but also being a victim of crime. In fact, it leads on the, on the safety and victim of crime aspect of it. Um, another thing people really didn't like was us say, talking about drug and alcohol misuse, um, particularly that word. And, and we haven't used that word for years in newer stars. So partly it's just renaming that scale, but also recognizing um, that use of alcohol or drugs can be uh, a coping strategy, particularly uh, when things are really bad and in the earlier bits of the scales. The other scale that's completely changed is motivation and taking responsibility. Um, and again, because that could sound as if people just weren't motivated to make changes, et cetera. Um, so that's changed to trust and hope so it's more how it might feel to the client. In other words, being more client-centered and trauma-informed. It's, it's like you can't engage because you really have no hope or cannot trust the people offering it or trust that things could get better. Um, and finally, the other scale that's quite significantly changed is meaningful use of time, which is now how I spend my time and much more broadened out from uh, sort of work, volunteering or the journey to work. To, to what's meaningful for the person themselves. Next, please. So you probably can't see this very clearly on your screen in terms of size, but this is the new home star. I feel like I should have a drum roll here, especially after <laughs> two years of development of it. Uh, as you can see, it even looks different, partly just simply because we've put colors into the, the dots in the star, which is what we've done with quite a lot of newer versions of the star. But otherwise it is, you know, it's the same main 10 areas, um, but with those changes that I've just, the, that I've just described. Next, please. 
And similarly, the journey of change it is the same uh, basic journey of change, which we call our core empowerment journey of change. Um, it's got the same start at stuck and the same end at self-reliance. Um, we had a lot of conversations about stuck at the start and tried all sorts of different alternatives, but it does actually describe, and the clients that we've consulted as well say, no, no, that is how it sounds. You know, you really do need someone to reach out to you in a way that works for you because it does all feel very stuck. But then as you can see, that second stage is now getting help. That was accepting help before. Um, third stage, believing and trying. And the fourth stage is finding what works. Um, that again, what that used to be called learning. Um, so that's a slight shift. Again, it really means the same, but again, it's trying to be more how it would feel from the perspective of the client. Okay, yeah, I'm getting a grip on this. I'm finding what works. Yep, yeah, this is working. Well, this is starting to work with support. Next, please. So as with all versions of the star, um, and as with the current homelessness star, every single point on every single um, scale is, is um, has statements and bullet points attached to it. So there are basically a hundred descriptors in the uh, home star as there are in the homelessness star. And um, for each of the 10 uh, um, points on the journey of change for each of the 10 scales, there is um, quite a short I statement um, as in on this slide, which describes how it is. Um, so for example, at the top, it's I live independently and manage my, my tenancy and don't need support with this. So that is that point of self-reliance. And in what you've got the same as in the homelessness style, we have a user guide, which has got these uh, statements, both in a ladder form that's, that's visual and brief, and then also in detailed scales where you've got bullet points, mostly as reference points for workers, for training, that are, are, are framed as a you statement and describe some of the behaviors that you might see, some of the ways you might know someone was at that particular point, but all written in a way that can be shared with um, the people that you are supporting. It's all written to be accessible, person-centered, trauma-informed. Next, please. There's also um, a brief scales document. We didn't actually have this for the homelessness star, but we have got it for quite a lot of stars. It's an alternative um, for using directly with the people you support. So it's basically a shorter document than the user guide. It doesn't have the detail in it. So we recommend that you know, all workers would have the user guide for reference, um, but this at least puts the statements in front of people in a way that is uh, more accessible. It's, it'll be a sort of, it, it's a much shorter document basically and illustrated. Next, please. Uh, we also have uh, have produced flashcards for the home star. Again, we have this for a lot of newer stars, um, but we don't um, we haven't had them for the homelessness star. So the flashcards are an alternative as well for engaging people, particularly if they have uh, limited English or they struggle with too much written word or it looks too much like forms. And what we've got is, and these can be printed and uh, back to back, so you can create your own um, uh, set of printed out flashcards, but we've got one for each of the 10 areas. And so on the front of it, you would have that illustration that you've got the big illustration there. And on the back, it will be the four main areas covered, covered by that, each of them illustrated. And uh, I have to do a shout out for our designer, Donna, who has been incredibly creative, um, particularly in the more sort of amorphous areas such as uh, trust and hope and uh, safety, uh, where some of the illustrations, I think, are really excellent. And again, designed not to trigger people, you know, so, um, but, but to communicate as much as possible. Next, please. So I'm going to move on now to a few slides which talk about uh, what to do if you are an existing user of the homelessness star. 
which from the poll at the beginning, I think looked like about three quarters of the people on this webinar, which is really good because um, that is the intention. So if you don't use it, you're also very welcome and you're very welcome to listen to this bit, but it will be less directly relevant to you because you can just start with the home style and that's all much, much more straightforward. But if you do use the existing homelessness star, we would encourage you to switch to the home star as soon as you possibly can. Basically, it's better for key work. It's got those extra resources. The wording is much better. The whole star itself is, is instantly uh, viewed as more client-centered and accessible. Um, it's also less likely to raise uh, objections from people, from workers, you know, who, especially those that found some of the previous wording a bit difficult or felt that it was implying blame where that wasn't appropriate. Well, it's never appropriate. Um, also, it should give you uh, better data. I mean, that's particularly in the offending scale. That's the other reason we changed that scale so fundamentally is that um, we do look at the data, the anonymous data across the different stars on the star online. And uh, we know from doing that, that the offending scale doesn't meaningfully show change because most people were simply starting at 10. So that shouldn't be the case now that it also records uh, being a victim of crime, which works. Uh, so it should work much better. Um, you've also got that increased accessibility through the flashcards, through the, the short scales. So yes, do switch. However, a few things to think about when you do. Uh, next slide, please, Jen. So because some of the scales have changed significantly, this is a significantly different star. So we, when we review the stars and create new um, additions, uh, one of the things we often do is simply update the language, but not in a way that significantly affects uh, the data. So we can simply replace one addition with another. That hasn't always happened and it's not the case in this case. So what it is, is that the data sets you have, the data gathered using the homelessness star is not directly comparable to the home star. It will be in some cases, but when Anna and I really investigated this together, Dr. Anna Good, our researcher, and I looked at it, mostly the changes are, uh, are of an order where the data is not directly comparable. There's four scales that have changed really quite a lot, but even another three, I think we identified, have changed, have changed significantly. So it's not the same to say, for example, that a seven on motivation and taking responsibility in the homelessness star is the same as seven in trust and hope on the home star. So, this means that there will be an interruption in the continuity of your data set um, when you're looking at individual outcome areas. Um, we do have guidance um, on how you can still draw reports between the homelessness star and the home star for very overview areas in terms of, for example, how many people have made progress in X number of, of areas of the star. Um, and so that guidance uh, is available on our website and uh, we can point you to it. But in terms of detailed data sets, um, it will, there will be an interruption whilst you make the shift. And again, we have quite detailed guidance around this as well. Also, we hope that if you're using the homelessness star, that will appear in internal policy documents for example, about when you introduce it, how often you do it. So you may need to do a, um, an audit of what you've got as in the way of internal documentation that mentions any of the areas of the homelessness star, the name of the homelessness star, and look at updating those to the, to the home star. So there are considerations. Uh, obviously we will help in whatever way we can. We've written a, a how to switch document, which will be, sent out to everybody here along with the recording of this webinar. We will also allow time for switching. So the Home Star is being published on the Star Online alongside the existing Homelessness Star. So you can um, decide when and how to switch to some extent. So next, please. 
But there will be two main options. One is that you say, OK, from the 1st of June 2022, we're going to switch all clients existing and new to the home star. And that and then you in between uh, the first, the 4th of April, when it's published and the beginning of June, you'd look at doing that internal audit, uh, maybe warning commissioners. We're also um, uh, producing guidance for commissioners, explaining the, the interruption in the data sets for detailed outcome areas. Um, or you can say, OK, we're going to start using the Home Star, you know, maybe as soon as possible in April for new clients and then phase it in, which will um, work best for people where there's a high turnover of clients and quite a lot of new clients, because that could be that within six to 12 months, all the people that you're supporting are new and all of them are on the home star. But as I say, we've written guidance which sets out both the, the advantages and the challenges of both of those options, and we can talk that through with you. Next, please. Uh, but it's free. Um, if you already have a star license um, that covers you for the home star, as it does for all versions of the outcome star, we're not uh, additional training is not obligatory if you've already been trained. But it is a good moment. I mean, refresher training is um, recommended anyway, can be incredibly helpful, especially if people have sort of drifted away from good use of the stars. And um, so this would, might be a moment to consider that, but it's not obligatory. Um, if you haven't been trained, you use the star through Inform or other systems, uh, maybe a sort of legacy use of the star from when it was first around. Um, do come, do get in touch with us because we have a way to phase that in that will be helpful. And just be aware, you know, that we're here to help. Uh, we're really, really proud of this new edition and confident that it's going to be worth um, the initial added effort of switching, both in terms of internal systems and, and data. So, yes, highly recommend that uh, you engage with it as soon as it's available and uh, plan how to switch as soon as possible. Thank you. Next slide, please, Jen. Um, so these are some quotes, uh, particularly from the uh, workshop we had with Psychologically Informed Environments in December. And I'm pleased to see that somebody from P3 is here. Bang up to date, language is particularly good. Uh, and also service users, New Star is more person-centered and focused. Um, and then also this is, I wanted to include this final quote partly because it's, it's general to the stars rather than this one, but I like this idea of, it, help pe it helps people untangle the knot of issues. And he went on to say that they can sort of just pull out the individual aspects of life and look at what's working well and what needs to change. Thank you. Uh, next, Jen, I think that's the end. So uh, I think we're moving to a final poll and q and Is that right, Graham? Jen, if you could pop the poll up, that would be great. So, well, I'd just like to thank Sarah for that fantastic presentation. Um, there's been lots of good comments in the chat as well, um, and uh, people seem to be quite pleased with the changes in the chat too. Um, but uh, as you can see, there's a poll now just to ask what your thinking is, having heard the, um, uh, the brief introduction that Sarah's just given. Um, uh, it does look as though many of you are already keen to start using this new home star. Um, only a couple who are a little bit nervous. Um, uh, and <laughs> I think we'll wait and see <laughs> see when everyone else has answered. <laughs> but um, yeah, we do have uh, we do have a few questions that have come up in the Q and A. And once the poll has uh, has closed, we'll we'll come back to that. Um, but if I could lead with some questions for Sarah from the Q&A, and if anybody else has questions that you'd like to pose for Sarah or any of the other panellists, we might be able to help to answer. Um, I'm going to bring those up now. So, Sarah, we had a question from Charlie Sanctuary Emmons. Um, how will we access the new star when it is released? 
Um, well, the same way as as all new versions of the star, it will be on the star online. So if you have access to the star online portal, uh, whatever, you know, whether you use the star online to actually input your data and draw reports and complete the star or whether you're using um, other software, uh, you should have access to the star online portal and everything, all the materials will be will be posted there. We'll also send out a reminder email to everybody when it's published. I mean, there'll be an email following this uh, webinar with uh, the resources from it, and then another one when the star is published to, to tell you that it's it's now published and where to where to access it. Yeah, and and just to add, if if anybody does have specific questions, um, uh, you can you can send those to info at triangleconsulting.co.uk or contact your um, implementation lead, uh, assuming you may have one. Um, some of the general questions. There's a question from Jane Stokes, um, uh, which Sarah, I think you can answer. Is is the plan to change the language on all stars in the future? So I think you can pick that one up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, we have changed quite a few. This isn't the first one that we've reviewed in this way, but I think this is actually one of the more radical changes that we've made, and particularly not so much in the detail of the scales. We a lot of the wording that we, we that's in the detail of the home star we have been using for some years now in other stars. So all the newer stars will have that. Um, but um, even but having the quite radically different naming of the outcome areas of the star is new to this star, and it's something that we will take forward into reviews of other stars and new stars. Uh, we're currently underway with a review of the uh, family stars. So that's you know the family star plus, family star of the years, family star itself. Uh, we put out a, a wide call for feedback last year on that and we're, we're currently working on new additions. So we're looking for people to, to give us feedback on those and we'll take the learning through. But it's quite, um, it's just quite a process. I mean, we're, we're also, um, yeah, in the process of trying to build internal capacity in Triangle uh, for working on the star development so that we can take that forward more quickly. Uh, at the moment, it tends to be that we're both developing new stars and reviewing existing ones, which can can take a bit longer. But yeah, that definitely is the plan. And if you have views on stars that really need that urgently, do do let us know because that helps us prioritize them. There's also the empowerment star, which is on our list uh, for this year. Thanks, Sarah. I'm going to pick up a question from Andrea Dixon, which has actually come in the chat. Um, it, it's a little bit easier for us if you pop them into the Q&A if you've got questions. But Andrea is saying, do service users have to be re-registered on the new star? Um, Sarah, I could probably pick that one up myself if you like. Yes, um, <laughs> so, so Andrea, to be honest, that depends on the system that you're using. Um, if you're if you're if you're on the star online, then you don't have to uh, recreate a service user. You can um, you, you can you can put a new star against a service user, um, but you may well be using a different system. And in which case, um, we'd probably have to take that one um, offline and, and pick that up separately. So, again, do do contact either myself or one of one of our colleagues, uh, info at trianglesconsulting.co.uk, if you're not sure um, who to contact. So loads more questions. I'm going to have to move on quickly here, Sarah, to get more people, uh, more people's questions answered. Um, when will the homelessness, homelessness star be phased out completely is a question from Alan. Yeah, that, I'm really glad you asked that because um, that I'm sure that will be something that a lot of people want to know. I mean, our, our initial thinking is not before April 2023, so it won't be less than an entire year of having both stars available and encouraging people to switch. But we're holding that quite lightly and we will review the situation when we find out more about um, how it is for people making a switch. It might just be very straightforward. And certainly if people use the star online uh, for reporting, we're, we're, um, we can help people with sort of bulk moving from one to the other or we'll be able to very soon. Um, so yeah, we'll keep that under review, but not less than a year away from publication. Thank you, Sarah. Um, there's a there's a question from sorry, I'm now trying to find it from uh, Laurel Struthers, I believe. How will this change impact those who are trainers? Do we need to complete a new facilitator training? No, in the same way as you don't have to be 
retrained in the home star if you're um, a worker and you've been trained in the homelessness star it's not obligatory but what we will do is that for all of our all licensed trainers so there's a there's a network of around 350 licensed trainers um, even just in the UK and then obviously more in Australia and New Zealand um, all of whom have been uh, trained and run training themselves in the homelessness star. We will be doing an update session. I mean, I know I'm running one session in May um, this year for for licensed trainers in the UK. Um, so we will up, we'll update you, and we would obviously encourage you to really engage with the home star, read it through in detail, notice the changes, um, ask us any questions, talk to um, our training team if you've got any questions. But there is there is no obligation to be retrained or relicensed. Thank you, Sarah. Um, we've got about 10 minutes officially still to go. Uh, quite a lot of questions in the Q&A. So if I could encourage you, if, if we don't get to one of your questions, please do contact us directly afterwards. We're gonna try and get through as many as we can. And if I could ask um, Dawn of Triangle to put our contact details into the chat so that people can follow up outside the webinar if we don't get to all of these questions. Um, so uh, there's a question from Pippa Robinson, whose service has just started using the homelessness star, so the old version, uh, and is in the process of adding residents. Um, she's asking, should we wait until the home star is available, which you, you've touched on. But again, do you want to do you want to just reiterate your point on that one, Sarah? Uh, well, we can switch you over on the star online. But to be honest, as it's only a couple of weeks now, I, I would wait um, and I would wait to actually use it with people until the home star is available, because you know, the, uh, one of the other things um, is, which we've put in a switch document, but I didn't highlight here, is that obviously if somebody has had an assessment using the homelessness star, then they as well will need to get used to the fact the star is different. We don't anticipate that being much of a problem because it's better and it's more accessible and people like it more. But it just, as you've only got a couple of weeks to go, I would, I would hold off personally uh, for, the, for the home star. Uh, I mean, we're we're on time, and the date is the fourth of April, so I don't anticipate any problem with that. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a couple of questions which uh, I, I'm happy to answer myself here, Sarah. Um, uh, one is, how will the rollout work with Inform? Um, many of you, of course, use the Inform service from Homeless Link. Um, I think the best thing to the best way to answer that is uh, is to contact Homeless Link, or contact Inform directly, or contact us directly. Um, but I can say generally that we've um, we've just recently provided them with the materials to to load up the new star. Um, they will be making it available uh, on Inform around about exactly the same time um, that we'll be making it available on Star Online. Um, and then there's a related question uh, which has come from Shane Leonard: uh, Will training be provided for the Home Star? Um, the answer is yes. We will be running training. Um, uh, Sarah has already alluded to this, uh, you, you might want to do it just as refresher training anyway. Um, but we are aware that a, um, a fairly large proportion of people who've used the old homelessness star didn't, didn't have the original triangle training. So we'd really encourage you to sign up for that. Um, and that will be sort of one of the, um, uh, uh, one of the elements of getting a license. Um, so uh, in, in terms of costs, again, Shane and anyone else who wants to know about that, please do get in touch directly because, um, yeah, it does depend on which system you're using it on at the moment, how, how the commercial side of things works. Um, there's a quick follow up for you, Sarah, from Jane Stokes again. Uh, I think this is all about, again, reviews of stars. She's asking which, uh, what, what about the empowerment star? When, when are we reviewing that? Uh, we're reviewing that uh, this year, though we haven't started yet. And um, but the first thing we'll do when we do start is is put out an email to everybody who already uses that that star, asking for uh, feedback. Um, and then we'll ask people to be involved with us in terms of reviewing drafts. So Jane, if you're up for being involved, that would be really fantastic. You know, we need people to to read drafts when we've reviewed them, and 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 preferably test them out with people they support and give us give us feedback on it to make them as 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 good as possible so it'd be great to have you involved in that thank you sarah um, um also just to say i'm um, with the poll i think it'd be good to stop i've um we've stopped the poll and, and are sharing the results and i'm going to probably just remove those um 
uh, oh yeah, um, remove it now, but I just wanted to highlight that we've got 86% of those who um, use the homelessness star are keen to start using the home star, some nervous, but not hugely. And the vast majority of those who are not currently, who are on this webinar and not yet using the star, think that it is going to be a good fit at 97%. So that's that's really good. So so Jen, I think you can um, stop sharing with, with that poll now so it comes off the screen. Thank you. Sorry, Graham, what's the next question? Uh, well, there's a question from Samantha Morris, uh, which I think we've actually already answered, but it's just to repeat the time frame on publishing the Home Star. Uh, we're planning to have it early April, should be should be the 4th of April on Star Online, um, around about the same date, it should be available on Inform. Um, please forgive us if we're a day or two late, but uh, hopefully... <laughs> we won't, we won't, we shouldn't be, and in fact, the um, all the preview versions and everything will be available on the Outcome Star website um, today. Um, so you will be able to look at those um, today. It's just actually on the Star Online and downloadable there will be the 4th of April. Uh, question from Kath Lewis. Uh, how easy is it to pull data from the Outcome Star? Uh, well, again, I think this comes back to uh, depends what um, system you're using to input it. If you use the our Star Online system for reporting, it's very easy. We have uh, very good um, standard reports set up, and it's also possible to download the data into and um, you know manipulate it in different ways, different ways yourself. So it depends what system you're using, but yeah, highly recommend the Star Online for that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's been a question from Paula Sanford Marsh, and I've seen one or two others about this. Um, uh, about shorter term services, uh, so services that don't have uh, a long term engagement with, uh, with with their clients. Could you say anything about that? Yes, it's I mean, it depends how short term. I mean, generally with the outcome stars, we would say that uh, if you were working with someone for less than about three months, uh, then it probably wouldn't be uh, the right tool. But uh, it might be sometimes for people if they work with somebody one to one and quite intensively, even if it's maybe for six weeks. Um, but generally, for very short term services, it might not be the right the right uh, tool. Uh, particularly this version. I mean, if you look at the whole suite of outcome stars, there are some which we would term a bit lighter touch. So they may be, you know, seven or eight different outcome areas on a scale of one to five. So it's just a, a bit lighter touch and easier to use. But this is is one of the more intensive ones and it is designed for, for where you are working with people over a period of time and one-to-one, and -one. but yeah. So, but you know, three, six months, you know, which I think is quite short-term in this area, uh, then, then yes. And that would also obviously depend on your client groups because for example, with homelessness, you know, young people might well change quicker and be in shorter term services. But for that, we would very much recommend the young person star because that's the, the youth version, the young person's version of the of the homelessness star, and and that works better for slightly shorter term services as well. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I think this might be the last question, and certainly the one last we have time for. But from Alex Hutchin, H Hutchison, um, and Alex is asking, will the homelessness star automatically change to the home star, or how do we change, and how do we access the training? Um, I think this is probably a very good point to, to end on. Uh, I think hopefully um, hopefully you've heard us say that it's not an automatic change. You do have to um, you do have to take an action to uh, to load up the home star. Uh, it does depend on which system you're using, but certainly on star online you'd need to um, switch over uh, to the home star. It doesn't happen automatically. Um, but very deliberately we've left this uh, um, page up as we've been talking. Uh, please do check out the website. We've got a special page for the Home Star. Uh, our email address is up there. Our phone number is up there, and you can even contact us via, uh, I believe, Twitter or LinkedIn if you if you really want to go down one of those two routes uh, with a further question. But um, there's been quite a lot of questions. If people do want specific us to look into specific questions for how this works for your service, we're very very happy to do so. Um, but we're a minute from the end, so I just want to really, really thank Sarah for all the hard work that went into this, preparing this presentation, but also into developing this new outcome style, because the feedback we, I've been seeing in that chat is that everyone loves it. So uh, 
Um, so thank you, Sarah. Thank you all for attending. Um, it's been a great hour. Um, we're more than willing to follow up, as I said, um, directly with you after the after the event. Um, but we are about to close. So unless you want to say any final words, Sarah. Well, just really good to see so many people here, over 200 people, and also the enthusiasm, you know, which is great. I mean, we are very proud of it and we would encourage you to switch to it as soon as possible. And we will be looking to bring this new learning into other stars as well. So yeah, really good. And thank you, Graham, uh, for hosting and Jen for organizing and also for our panel responding to people on the chat. Thank you. Well, that's great. We'll, 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 leave, we'll leave the webinar open just for a few more minutes if we can, just so that if people do have final messages, then pop them into the chat. Uh, a lot of people saying thank you and goodbye, which is fine. Um, but we'll capture any questions that come up in the chat, even, even for the next few minutes. So if you've got anything else, do pop it into the chat or to get, us, get in touch directly. Thank you all for attending. <laughs>